presentation of Fox Sports. We are Fox Sports. We are Sun. The Rays road trip before the All-Star game to Fenway got off to a frustrating start. Vic Poppy's fourth inning blast, along with some clutch hitting from Bryce Brents, led to a Boston victory 6-5. to five. Today, Matt Moore goes to the hill for the Rays, looking to continue his recent run of success. Today, we welcome you to the Back Bay Fin section of Boston, Massachusetts, here at Fenway Park, where the Rays and the Red Sox meet in game two of their three game series. Hi again, everyone, and welcome to an afternoon of Rays baseball with Brian Anderson, Dwayne Stats. Great to have you aboard. Well, Evan Longoria may not have been named to the All Star team, BA, but last night he gave an All Star performance here, and the guy on the mound today for the Rays, Matt Moore, the last few outings has made a statement himself. You know what? Yeah, let's talk about a couple of Rays that are getting it done right now. And let's start with Evan Longoria. You referenced his night last night. A big night for Evan. Three singles and a home run. But really not surprising at all because you go back to that long homestand the Rays just had. And Evan's batting average from that point going forward, 396. And he's had four games of at least three hits, including last night. Those three singles. That home run, by the way, gave him 19 he here in the first half that sets a new career high for Evan and you can see that the swing is lightning fast the plate coverage is tremendous and he just again we've been talking about this for a while he is not missing mistakes and Matt Moore he's been on a very nice run here his last five starts a three and one record the ERA very good how about that opponent average being under 200 and the deal for Matt Moore it's a tried and true formula he's limiting his walks not hurting himself just eight walks in these five starts and he's keeping the ball in the yard. He has given up just three home runs, so you don't, you limit the walks, you keep the ball in the yard, you give your chance for success, and he has certainly done that. So Matt Moore attempts to continue his string of success. The Rays trying to snap a four-game losing streak. They'll be up against Rick Porcello, the Boston right-hander. An overcast day in Boston. Back with more after this.
Rays dropped last night's game six to five here at Fenway Park. They are four and three against the Red Sox this year and two and two here in Boston. Take a quick look at the starting lineup for the Rays presented by your Southern Ford dealers. Logan Forsythe in the leadoff spot again. Brad Miller, Evan Longoria, followed by Logan Morrison, Steven Souza Jr., and Corey Dickerson with Nick Franklin, Oswaldo Arcia, and Kurt Casale rounding out the Rays lineup. Well, in this afternoon, Rick Porcello takes the mound for the Boston Red Sox, having a very strong first half, as you see the numbers, a 10-2 record, an ERA of 382. First pitch of this game is a strike call on the outside part of the plate. Forsyth opening the day at 289 with eight home runs. He got his eighth here last night. Strike two. And, and Porcello is a strike thrower. He is. He, he works quickly. A lot of strikes. When he's right, he keeps the ball on the ground. Good sinker. Keeps the infielders involved. Up a bit. I'll tell you, the one change in his game is his strikeout rate this year is at a career high. So not only is he getting a lot of ground balls, but more strikeouts than he's ever gotten, and that tends to lead into a 10-2 a type record. Wide there, 2-2. Two, two. Well, he works ahead so much in the count that it really gives him options, and a guy with good command, good control, then is at a decided advantage. Breaking ball, and now it's three and two. He jumped right out ahead with two quality strikes and some bad misses since. Lifted to the right side. That's Shaw, who's playing first base today, making the catch. And that's the first out. Now let's go ahead and set that Red Sox defense for you. Brought to you by Gold and Diamond Source. And in the outfield left to right, we have Bryce Brents, Jackie Bradley Jr., and Mookie Betts. Across the infield, third to first, Aaron Hill, Xander Bogarts, Dustin Pedroia, and Travis Shaw. Sandy Leone will be back behind the plate. Brad Miller drove in a run with a fly ball last night. Otherwise, 0 for 4 starts the day with a career high 13 home runs. And the fastball is a strike, another first pitch strike. This is the type of guy you expect the Rays lineup to go out there and be ready to hit against, ready to swing the bat. One and one. High fly ball, deep into left. Prince will go back, look up. It's gone, out of here for Brad Miller. His 14th home run of the year. The Rays take the lead. Brad Miller continues to hit the log ball. Well, and we've seen him a number of times going out to left field, too. He's got that kind of power, and I didn't think this ball was hit that well sinking away you see him get underneath it and pop that ball up it just would not come down you talk about creating some backspin and this ends up being an easy home run now Evan Longoria Evan hits a high fly ball into left Brents back to the track he will have room and makes the catch in front of the green monster scoreboard that pitch got in on Evan just enough, just enough. That was close to being back to back. So the Rays grab an early lead on the Miller home run. He had hit 11 home runs last year for Seattle. Now 14 for the Rays. Not yet to the All Star break. Logan Morrison and there's a base hit through the 
shift on the right side. You know what? How many times have we seen Logan Morrison be able to rifle a ground ball through the shift? Of all the guys that the, the, the shift is played on by the Rays, I don't know if anybody else has been able to do it. But Logan Morrison seems to do that quite often. Shaw asking him that question right there at first, perhaps. <laughs> How do you do it? <laughs> you have to hit it hard, Travis. <laughs> Two outs with a man at first to run home. And here's Steven Sousa Jr. Sousa Jr. will be in center field today. Out in front of the off speed breaking ball. You know, you, you mentioned that, Dwayne. Communication is going to be paramount for this Rays outfield with Franklin in left. Sousa Jr. in center and Oswaldo Arcia. How much time have these guys played together, spent together? Very little, if any. And so you've got a tricky outfield, and you've got that outfield playing it. You better be talking. Well, we saw Sousa last night with Geyer in right center field have a little issue. Souza managed to hang on to the ball, but he almost took Geyer right out. That's a little popper down the right side, falling foul, and a hop into the stands here at Fenway. Well, this trip in for the Rays at Fenway, a little touch of September here. Temperature in the low 60s, overcast skies. It was 62 at game time last night. When we got off the plane the other night, it felt like a September evening. One and two. Rain in the forecast for later late today. And perhaps some tomorrow. Rays and the Red Sox will be hopeful of playing that game uninterrupted tomorrow. And strike three call that's on the corner says Corey Blazer. And the Rays are out in the first. They get a run on the Brad Miller home run. Bottom of the first coming up and the Rays have an early lead. To the bottom of the first inning and the lineup for Boston presented by your Southern Ford dealers Mookie Betts, Justin Pedroy and Xander Bogarts one two three down the middle David Ortiz Jackie Bradley Jr. and Aaron Hill Travis Shaw Bryce Prince 
Sandy Leone will round out John Farrell's lineup. And Matt Moore looking to duplicate what he did the last time out against the Boston Red Sox. That was on June the 29th. Seven shutout innings, gave up just three hits, and struck out six in that win. First pitch is a strike to Mookie Betts. That's it. Hitting an even 300. Boy, he Dave. is tops in the league, B.A., in total bases. More total bases than David Ortiz, who's having an unbelievable year. Yeah, I, I mean, first of all, David Ortiz is, what, now 21 home runs, and he leads Major League Baseball in doubles. So how in the world does Mookie Betts has more, <laughs> you know, take some... And, and, and by the way, David Ortiz walks, too. Yep. That's how busy this guy's been. Well, he is a tremendous, tremendous leadoff hitter. That's a base hit past the diving Morrison. And just go back and look at the swing. He took a pitch away, and he literally knows he's got room to work with over there because of the defensive you know, shift or shade. He just slaps it over there. That's on purpose. Just let it get in there and then hit it the other way, and he finds an opening. Got some room to play with. Able to sneak it by Logan Morrison. You know, even if that's right at Logan Morrison, he's going to beat Matt Moore to the bag anyway. Yeah, absolutely right. So he'll hit the ball over there all day and get on one way or another. And, and, and yeah, you look at that angle, too, and you say he's maybe aiming for Logan Morrison. Go ahead, because you're not beating me to the bag, and neither is your pitcher. Dustin Pedroia takes it down and in. More four and four lifetime against the Red Sox. There's 12 and two thirds scoreless innings going against them. A strike one and one. Moore pitched into the seventh inning in his outing against the Angels on the fourth. Made 113 pitches in that game and has been pitching consistently deeper in the games for the Rays. That was a goal of his. This one lifted into short right. Arcia coming on, gets there to make the catch. Arcia chugging to get in to make that grab. And Kevin Cash said he caught it, and that's the bottom line. Let's take a look at the rest of that Rays defense brought to you by Golden Diamond Source. And there's that outfield left to right, Franklin, Sousa Jr., and Arcia. And across the infield, third to first, it's the standard. Longoria, Miller, Forsyth, and Morrison. Kirk Casale gets the call behind the plate today. Tell you what, I, I thought that Nick Franklin did a nice job last night playing the wall out in left field. We know how tricky it can be, what kind of a challenge it poses, but he did a nice job on a couple of plays out there. Well, he took uh, Rocco Baldelli's advice to heart and played very well in front of the monster out there and left. Xander Bogarts takes a strike. Got to make a decision early is what Baldelli told him. React accordingly. Can you get there or can you not catch it? One and one. Boston starting the day third in the East. Two games out of first. Over to first. Back in Betts to the back side of that bag. Well, last night the Red Sox turned the ball game into a track meet. Tonight 
this afternoon, not going to be as easy. Matt Moore does a really nice job of controlling the running game, one being left-handed, being able to gauge a lead and stare at a base runner, but he's quick to the plate. He's got a nice slide step. He picks it up, puts it down. Ground ball. Miller, second one. Forsyth over to Morrison at first for the 6-4-3 double play. We're at the end of an inning, one nothing Rays. on Fox Sports Sun brought to you by Dodge. Visit your local Dodge dealer today. By Furman, the Bay Area's first name in Chevrolet. By Lazy Days RV, your RV authority. And by your local Toyota dealers. Let's go places. Here's Fenway. We move into the second inning with the Rays leading 1-0. Facing Rick Porcello today. Corey Dickerson about to lead it off. He takes this one to left. That ball is going to be off the wall. Dickerson's going to dig for two, and the ball bounces away from Brantz. In there, standing Dickerson at second base. Well, that's one of those decisions, Dwayne, that you're talking about. What Rocco Baldelli was talking to Nick Franklin about. If you don't make a, an early decision, that ball comes off the wall hot. It's got a chance to force a misplay. This ball hit hard. And watch Bryce Brents kind of drift, drift, drift. OK, now I'm going to wait for it. But look, he's too close. And that ball comes down, and it's by him before he can react. So the double, number 14 for Dickerson. Rays have an early scoring opportunity in this inning. Nick Franklin at the plate. Pitch is a strike. Timeless moment brought to you by Coors Banquet. And for Nick Franklin, it has been a good run here the last 10 games. 12 runs batted in and an average of 361. That's fouled back. Kevin Cash has noticed that Franklin is hitting the ball with a little more authority than he did in earlier trials with the Rays when at times he seemed to be overmatched. You know, a big part of that was him pulling off the ball. You know, as he would start his swing, he would almost start falling towards the first base dugout, not staying in there and driving the baseball, which is what he's doing now. He comes up empty there, but he's been swinging, and you're right, a much more, I don't know, aggressive swing, solid contact, the numbers back it up. Yeah, 
with more authority, that's for sure. Yeah. Well, you know, here's the thing. He's another guy that has gotten an opportunity because of injury, and he's forced his way into regular playing time, getting it done in the field, too. Man, it's second. Marcelo got exactly what he needed against Franklin, the strikeout. Here's Arcia. And he takes that soft curveball and looks at it for a strike. Arcia got hot when he joined the Rays from the Twins. Right now, hitless in his last 14. And down in the count, 0 2. Curveball, then the fastball. Yeah, slowed him down and then tied him up. That, that ball was, you know, middle in. It wasn't even in it, but up a little bit on the inner half. And, and Arcia likes to get those arms extended. He just got tied up there. High fly ball back into deep center. Bradley a long way to go. He'll make the catch. Tag at second. Dickerson heads to third. And is there the throw up the left field side of third. From deep center. Bradley uncorked a long throw. But up the outfield side of third. Well there was a lot of moving parts there. And Jackie Bradley Jr. throwing showing a strong arm. But did you see where Rick Porcello was? Yeah, this is going to short hop. It's wide, and it's going to short hop Pedroia. But Rick Porcello, he was all the way behind Pedroia, right up against the Rays' dugout, right where he needs to be. There's Kurt Casale, two outs, a man at third. Pitch in there for a strike. And the curveball this time. Just a little piece of that one foul. Marcelo with a pretty good assortment of pitches, and he does a good job of commanding most of them. And mixing them. Yep. You know? You're right. Upstairs. You know, that, that, it's funny. That if you can command the four pitches, that allows you to be able to mix them. Mm -hmm. You don't have to get predictable. Well, when I'm behind, I really don't have command of these two, so I stick with these two. Yep. You can, if you can command them all, then you can mix and match, and it makes it that much tougher on a hitter. Two and two. Well, it's worked out for him. The ability to do that has led to essentially a $20 million a year deal with the Red Sox. So it seems it's worth the time. <laughs> to try to figure out how to command all those pitches. Into the dirt with this one, and it's blocked by Leon. As he fires the breaking ball to the backside. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> so the count's full after this pitch. Yeah, how important is this block? And not an easy one. That's way wide. Look at Leon getting out there, taking it to the chest and keeping it close. You know, the Red Sox made a real pickup. In getting Leon, he does a great job behind the plate. They really got him for his catching. He's also been hitting for them. And Casale out on strikes. Lead off double. The Rays leave a man at third and lead one nothing.
Houston coming in to hit in the bottom of the second inning. The Buick GMC big matchup. Career numbers against Matt Moore for David Ortiz. 370 with three home runs. And if you extrapolate that out over his career, that's about what he's done against Rays pitching at large. Fouls the first pitch fastball back. It's sweeping cut, strike one. Ortiz, second in the league in hitting, second in runs batted in. High pop fly. Souza Jr. covering a lot of ground in center to get there and make the catch. An expansive center field. All three of these fields have their own challenges here at Fenway. Well, we, we've talked about Nick Franklin in left. You, you think about center field with all of the different nooks out there, 420 feet away, and all the ground you have to cover into right center and then that plays into what the right fielder has to deal with. He's got the pesky pole, the short wall, but then he gets big in a hurry. So you've got to be able to cover ground out there too. One and oh to Jackie Bradley Jr. Yeah, just take a look at that. Short right down the line to the pesky pole and then almost immediately it's 380. Yeah. 380 to straight away right field. <laughs> 287 down the line. Whatever it is. But anyway, yeah, you see how big it gets. And then you got the low wall that comes into play if you're going back. Ground ball toward the middle, through into center. Bradley Jr. has a base hit. Well, the way they had the defense played right there, I mean, Brad Miller was the only one that had a shot at that. He would have had to go over on the, the second base side of second base. You see where Logan Forsythe is, kind of pulled over in the hole on the right side. And Bradley Jr. finds an opening. Here's Aaron Hill, one of the latest acquisitions, and the Red Sox have a bunch of them now. They suddenly found themselves in need of personnel. Hill fouls it back. That's a strike. Nick Kimbrell is out there saying three to six weeks. He hurt himself in the outfield running during batting practice yesterday. A fluke injury. But it's going to cost him a month to a month and a half it would appear. Well, they, they, they set him off for, for the MRI, and it came back torn meniscus. Yeah, that'll cost him some time for sure. Fly ball into left. A little popper on the left side, that is, to Miller. And so Miller takes care of that. Our greater coverage of baseball brought to you by T-Mobile, and here's more on their bullpen situation. With Kimbrell going to the disabled list, Brad Ziegler's been acquired from Arizona. They expect him to show up today, but he will not be active today. We'll have to wait another day. And the veteran right-hander Brad Ziegler comes in. So Dave Dombrowski has been busy here in the last day or so. And John Farrell, you know, has said Brad Ziegler and Koji Rihara, as you might expect, will be the guys based on matchups. Availability, all of those things will be the guys that, that get the closing opportunities while Kimbrell's out. And you expect Dave Dombrowski, you expect more moves from the Red Sox here in the, the coming weeks. I, I think this is one of those teams and one of those years. You look at the weakness of this Boston team, you say maybe they need to shore up the pitching staff, look at the starting rotation, because with their offense, this is by far and away the best offense in Major League Baseball. It's David Ortiz's final year. You cannot let that just go by the wayside. You've got to go for it, and if you're going to go for it, you've got to bring in some pitching help, and that's what they'll be looking for. Yeah, they're, and specifically now starting pitching. Also on that bullpen, Tozawa's 
and not available with the bad uh, right shoulder right now. You set, one of your setup guys and, and your closer. Think about Tozawa. The Shaw drives it deep. Left center. Souza on the run. Gets there. Souza Jr. on the track in front of the monster at left center. Covered a lot of ground to grab that one off the bat of Travis Shaw. What a star by that one for Steven Souza Jr. in center. Order for the Rays against Rick Porcello. Logan Forsyth, who popped out his first time after working the count full. This time he takes that first pitch breaking ball too high. Two and zero. Oh. Run for the Rays came on the Brad Miller home run. He'll be next. Good cut right there. It was a fastball in the upper part of the zone. Caught Corey Blazer right in the face. Brad Miller now with 14 home runs. <laughs> two and two. His career high was what 12 did that a year ago already surpassed that closing in on the Rays record for the shortstop position already. Yep one more and he will match that. You know if you look at some of his numbers from Seattle it's not altogether a surprise. I think we've been surprised because we've had a chance to see him every day and see how hard he hits the ball and how far they go. The high pop to the right side and Shaw in foul territory makes the catch. You know when the Rays made that deal. They got a first baseman and a shortstop and they really looked to Logan Morrison to be the guy with more power. And he's got some power but if you look at Miller his slugging percentage last year with Seattle was higher than Morrison's slugging percent. And so this outbreak of home runs from uh, Brad Miller, when you look at some of his other numbers, not a an overwhelming surprise. It's been a pleasant surprise to be sure. Well, they've, they've also brought Brad Miller over to a team where the hitting philosophy became turn it loose. Yeah aggressive and turn it loose and we're seeing the byproduct of that you know he could uh, blazer yeah. got dinged again yes he did you know where he sets up on right handers and left handers he gets inside the catcher 
So he exposes himself. Not directly behind the catcher like you, you see some guys are just off their shoulder. And he's taken two shots right to the mask. Yeah, they have the crew chief, Jeff Nelson, walking in from second, and he wants to make sure that Corey Blazier's all right. We get some attention from the Red Sox training crew. Yeah, that, that's two in a matter of four or five pitches. So you would imagine they're going through the protocol of questions right there to make sure he's uh, well aware of his whereabouts and the and the names of his fellow umpires. Yeah. In all of sport and certainly baseball, uh, very aware of concussions and the potential for them. He says he's okay. So we'll resume here. Blazier, one of the young umpires, just 34 years old, became uh, full time two years ago in 2014. Miller pops it up on the infield. Pedroia coming in, but now Hill from third and ducking to get out of the way is Porcello. Yeah, he should have gotten a little further out of the way. Aaron Hill finally got a beat on that, and all of a sudden you've got uh, you know, Rick Porcello kind of standing there almost in your way. Watch, Rick starts to move here. Okay, but now it's still, still whoa. I think he's wondering if he was going to have to try to catch that ball. But you know, on this uh, Boston infield, the one guy who starts charging first is Pedroia, regardless of where the ball is. And then Hill came in from third because it was a little bit on that side. But if you're a pitcher on this team, you get a pop up, you turn them around immediately, and Pedroy is right behind you. Yeah. Precisely the reason why you, you get out of dodge. <laughs> Plus, you're not sure if he may be there, may be there to yell at you. That's so right. He'll do way, that too. Yeah, you just yeah. get out, get, get away from him. Move on. 1 1 the count to Evan Longoria. Two balls and a strike. Evan hit his 19th home run of the year last night. There's a shot into left center, but Bradley will have room not yet to the track. Three up, three down, go the Rays. Bottom of the third coming, one nothing.
Major League start in center field, and today he plays in the park that Kevin Kiermaier calls the toughest place to play center field here at Fenway. Susan Jr., in addition to taking extra fly balls, shagging pregame, also was told about all the angles here at Fenway Park in center field. Of course, the monster in left, and then all the different corners here in the outfield. So uh, he said he had to Google geometry quiz and went online and was going to take a quick geometry quiz because he said it's been a while since I've studied angles. So Sousa Jr., a student of the game, and at least today a student of geometry, guys. Uh, that's a pretty good insight there that uh, Todd Callas has uncovered. He's uh, going online to uh, freshen up on geometry, Sousa, before he plays center field here. He may be, I would wager, and be pretty safe in wagering this. He's the first baseball player ever in the history of the game to actually actively study geometry before he played the outfield here. Yeah, you, you know if you go to most Major League Baseball players, outfielders from around the league, and you drop the word isosceles on them, and they're going Greek mythology, or they're looking at you like you got <laughs> 10 heads. They've never heard of it. Yeah. <laughs> it's three and one on Bryce Prince. But Sousa Jr., on the other hand. Yeah. He's on it. Yeah. If you say hypotenuse, they think you're greeting some guy named Potnus. The <laughs> ground ball to third. Longoria takes care of that with a throw across the diamond to Morrison. This is what it's become. This is not <laughs> what it's become. This is it. Yep. Two, we're sitting up in the in the balcony. Yep. With, with the high point in the finger. You got it. It's supposed to be fun. It is. It's the best thing to have. Come on. I, how can you not? Yeah. You got to do it every day. That's right. And it's lots of hours every day. Mm -hmm. And if you're not going to enjoy it, have some fun, then you know what? Just take it to the house and go be miserable somewhere else. <laughs> Lesson number 103 from Ryan Anderson. And you're right. Want to know the count to Leon? I'll tell you something else that doesn't hurt. This will be lesson number 104. Well, I was on my, <laughs> I, I was on the walk here. Yes. And, oh, you're, you're gonna luck out. Yeah, a little pop up. Hey, it's only the second out. Oh, see, I thought it was the third. Okay, so here's the thing. That's how good my scorebook is. So. Here's the deal. So I'm on my walk here. I get caught in a long phone conversation, and I end up walking by my coffee house of choice. Yes. But I stumbled across another one mm -hmm. called the Wired Puppy. Whoa. And let's just say yes. Oh, yes. Yes. Okay. I am a Wired Puppy right now. <laughs> There's no doubt about it. Very good. So if you happen to be tuned in, you don't want to go anywhere else. As I sit next to the wired puppy. You order your coffee, and they have like five different ways to brew it. A couple ways I didn't even know you could. Never heard of it. <laughs> the strike to Mookie Betts, the count is one and one. But, I mean, I went simple, but I went a limited roast mm -hmm. and it is it's got me right where I need to be I can tell one one is lifted to the right side long run again for Arcia not sure he'll get there he does a sliding catch by Arcia boy that's two he's really had to get on the horse and ride and he got there in the nick of time we go to the fourth one nothing raise
as we go to the fourth and Logan Morrison's going to lead it off against Rick Porcello. It's a ball down and in. Susan Jr. next and then Dickerson. Front of the Boston dugout. Well, the Raids have dropped four straight. And this 23 game stretch, dropping 20 of those, the worst stretch in franchise history. Lifted into short center. Bradley takes it. You know, okay, here's the thing, Dwayne. We've seen a number of balls up in the air and some interesting routes, some good routes, some routes where you get the feeling that the outfielder's not quite sure. I'm, I'm telling you, the wind must yep. be playing a little bit up there. I think you're right. And I think that's what happened with the RC of both times. Yes. You know, you get the, a pretty good read on a ball, and then it's not going where you anticipated, carried by the wind. And, you know, Todd was out there in the... The center field section as close as you can get to center with the green monster and I think it was a little windy out there. Is, is he with us now Todd. Yeah it was guys there's definitely a factor with the wind today and out on the top of the monster you can really feel it back here behind home plate you don't feel it but it's definitely blowing in from center and right field today. Yeah that's the perch where Todd was earlier an inning ago and I could see how you uh, you could get a little wind blown out there. Ground ball to Bogarts at short. Oh, and he's safe at first. Shaw tried to dig it out, couldn't come up with it. Well, that that's, you know, Steven Souza Jr., one of those guys that gets out of the box, you know, in, in a flash, and he gets up to speed quick, and Bogarts kind of rushes that throw, and he keeps it low. Here it goes. That kind of hustle would put pressure on the defense, and it caused... Bogarts to kind of rush that throw. He really didn't get much into it and it ended up short. Yeah, you see Susan do that most of the time. That's why the other day when he didn't, he was singled out, it was a little surprising. And uh, he was straight up about that, uh, took responsibility for it, and uh, said that that's absolutely not the way he wants to be known as a player. You'll see him hustle all the time. Dickerson swings through this pitch. So Susie Jr. aboard on the ninth air of the year charged to Bogarts. Ray's lead on the strength of the Brad Miller home run in the first. You know, Souza's approach to this game sometimes, you think he might throw his body around more than you'd like. In fact, yeah. that's how he got hurt when he missed time with that bad hip. I think that's why initially when he came out of that game, you're thinking, well, it had to be an injury. Yeah, yeah you're not gonna you're not gonna pull that guy because he, he just that that's that never happens. Mm -hmm. I mean he's always playing hard and then you know when it when word came back it was non injury and it was that early in the game then you're like uh oh yep someone just got called to the principal's office <laughs> did you ever get called to the principal's office I don't know that uh, there's some areas that we should actually even get into wow <laughs> okay I'm gonna take that as a yes and you don't want to tell the story <laughs> Fine. Yeah, there was that misbehavior in the science lab once. <laughs> Mixing things you know you shouldn't have. Well, hey, you know, you're in the lab, you're supposed to experiment. <laughs> Honest mistake. It only cost the school district, you know, $15,000. <laughs> yeah, they just didn't see it the same way.
A one two count on Corey Dickerson. That'll play. Dickerson doubled off the wall in the second inning. McFranklin on deck. Dickerson's been on a 16 for 43 run over the last couple of weeks coming into this game. Takes this one to left. Brents is there. Moving to his right is that. Ball had a little slice on it going the other way off Dickerson's bat. Two gone. Rock out with the Rays at the Brett Michaels postgame concert. That's Saturday, July 16th, after the Rays and the Orioles game. It'll be nothing but a good time. All Budweiser and Bud Light 20 ounce beers, only $5. For tickets, go to the game and to purchase concert field access wristbands. Call 888-FAN-RAYS or visit RaysBaseball.com. Strike one, a swing and a miss by Nick Franklin. Home run, 12 runs batted in, a couple of doubles on his line now. Marcello just challenged him with that fastball. And he's been moving the fastball. You go back to the, the strikeout from the first at bat, and then the two pitches here in this at bat just continues to move that fastball around on Nick Franklin. And, and so far, he's it's like whack a mole, not been able to get there. Runner goes, pitch down, throw down. Come on. Got him on the scoop. Bob Bogarts to put the tag on Souza. They're probably going to have to look at this too because it looked like the tag was high on Souza Jr. What a pick though by Leon. And he gets the throw down, bounces. Yeah, I think they got him. So we're going to go into the bottom of the fourth with the Rays on top, 1-0. Bottom of the fourth, Toyota keys to success for Boston. When you look at their runs per game, I mean, that tells you a lot. And average with men in scoring position, those numbers in between all contribute to that 5.67 runs per game. You know, and, and where the average with runners in scoring position is even more impressive is they give themselves more opportunities than just about everybody in the game. 
So not only do you have that very good average, but you've got more chances than everybody else. And that's why when you go back and look at this team right now in third place, you know that they're going to push the chips to the center of the table. You can't let an offensive year like that go by the wayside. Dustin Pedroia leading off. That last fastball in the mid-90s up a bit. The count is 2-0. Oh. Pedroia, Bogarts, and then Ortiz. It's a strike, 2-1. and one. Did he go? He did not. So it's now a 3 1 count. Pedroia hit one of those fly balls into right field in the first that Marcia had to travel a long way for and put on the afterburner to get there coming in. And a big cut from Pedroia. Yeah, he got very big there, very loopy and long, and Matt Moore with the 95. Watch him power it right by him. Towering foul. Headed out of play. I'd say you got to be impressed with the way that Matt Moore has been throwing the ball as of late and here this afternoon showing even a little bit more velocity wise mm -hmm. and he looks smooth and clean and easy that ball is is really jumping out of the hand now to get to 95 I, he's been averaging somewhere around 93 number 92.78 hit 93 another high foul out of play but he's been healthy in the mid 90s strong 95 today. No and for Matt Moore you know when you start to think about his keys to success you know it's easy to say fastball command he's never been a real fastball command guy but you want him to get that pitch into the correct areas you know if you want it up okay then down in or out not, he's not going to be precise. But he's been getting that pitch into the proper areas. There's no doubt about it. Except there. And he gives up a leadoff walk to Pedroia. He's able to do that. You know, then yeah, the, we've seen a good curveball and a good changeup. These are the types of things that he's limited. He's limited those walks. And that's helped him. Well, he walked only two in his last outing. This is his first walk in this one. Sometimes it's when you walk him, too. And a leadoff walk going into the heart of the order. Well, not the percentage move that you would like. Here's Bogarts, third leading hitter in the American League. He takes a strike. Got Bogarts to ground into a 6 4 3 double play in the first. Foul ball back, fastball. David Ortiz on deck. Fielded by Brian Butterfield, the third base coach here in Boston. The fellow whose name is often mentioned in managerial considerations. 
Yeah, he's a good one. He was a good one. He was the third base coach when I was with the Diamondbacks, part of Buck Showalter's staff. Good, good baseball mind. Thorough and smart. Yeah. Yeah. Approachable, likable, mm -hmm. but demands. Oh, a long one to left. That one is out of here. 0-2 fastball that Bogarts gives Boston a 2-1 lead. His 10th home run of the year. That was sudden. You cut yourself off mid-sentence, and by that time, the ball's already out of here. That's how quick this was. Not a doubt in his mind. Fifty-five runs batted in for Bogarts. And on one swing, the Rays find themselves down by a run. Now it's David Ortiz. Ball one. Ortiz hit the high fly ball into center. Caught by Sousa Jr. to open the second inning. That's with the bases empty. Nobody out in the fourth. And Moore falls behind. 2 and 0. Oh. The Toyota inside look. Final year for David Ortiz, and he is doing it up in a big way. Second in hitting, first in slugging percentage. That goes right along with the extra base hits. Second in runs batted in. Strike on the inside edge. Three and one. Ortiz homered last night. His 50th home run off Rays pitching. Driven in more runs than any hitter against the Rays, 170. And Moore walks him. Second walk of the inning. That's something that he, listen, what did we say in the open, Wayne? The, the Matt Moore's tried and true method to success was he was limiting the walks and keeping the ball in the yard. So how does he start this inning off, walk, and a home run? Yep. And that, that's what he's been avoiding. That's why he's been throwing the ball very well. Another walk here. Now he faces the left-handed bat of Jackie Bradley Jr. This is on the first pitch to him. You know, Bogarts hit the home run to give them the lead. He's now six out of 12 in his career against Moore. Bradley pops it up. Longoria looking skyward. And he's got it. He had to make an adjustment there. You get the ball high enough here, and the wind is going to take over. Yep, that, that, that's what the tell was. When you see a number of these pop-ups or fly balls, and just the body language and reaction of these players, it tells you that, that something up there, and that you're not going to get much out of that flagpole. It, it's, it's low. But... You could see right there in Evan Longoria, one of the best in the business, and he had to make a late, pretty significant adjustment to make that catch. Aaron Hill popped to short the first time, a strike here on him. One and 
one. balls and a strike We're here with a couple of walks and that home run in between that uh, rhythm and pace that Moore had through the first three has changed working out of the stretch now Ortiz over at first he retired Bradley 2-1 to Hill liner into left that will fall for a base hit Falling in front of Nick Franklin. Two men on now. And Travis Shaw, another one of these hitters like Bogarts before him. Betts, Bogarts, and Shaw have had the most success in recent times against Moore. Part of that was Matt coming back last year from his Tommy John surgery. And Shaw came in five out of ten against him. Five of eleven right now with that fly ball to center. Sousa ran it down made a good catch. There's a strike. How often do you see Matt Moore go first pitch change up to a left handed hitter. Yeah. That's because of those numbers you just talked about and the fact that that ball that Sousa Junior got to out there in center was blistered. Made a nice play to get to it. Start to change up patterns. Line foul into the seats. A two strike count. I, I'll tell you what this meeting is about, Dwight. It, 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 making sure that everybody's on the same page with the pitch you're supposed to be throwing. Watch Casale. <laughs> yeah, that's a cross up. Yeah. I'll tell you, and I'm not sure he could have recovered. No. Had uh, that ball not been fouled. And he got him a wave and a miss. Swept the curveball there. This will be the second out. Well, he yanks this curveball right here, and Travis Shaw just has no chance. You see him trying to hold up there. Forget about it. Early commitment. Two outs. Bryce Brintz grounded to third, his first stop. Fastball ball in. Turns away. Two, four, and one now for Boston. One, three, and oh for the Rays. Bottom of the fourth. That'll catch the edge. One and one. And out of play. One run game last night, six to five, the final. Boston winning it. It's two to one right now. Did go down to first the throw. Rinse out on strikes. 
Red Sox finish. They score two on the Bogarts homer. Two to one, Boston. Boston leading. Every day feels like Christmas with the Kiermaier Claus bobblehead presented by TGH Children's Medical Center. Kids 14 and under pick up the bobblehead while supplies last as the Rays face the Orioles Sunday, July 17th. Call 888-FAN-RAYS or visit RaysBaseball.com today. Kevin Kiermaier in uniform in the Rays dugout. Took a little batting practice before the game today. Todd Callis will have more on uh, what Kevin Kiermaier hopes his plans will be. Trying to get back into that Rays lineup. Nick Franklin making a breaking ball on the first pitch for a ball and now he's up 2 and 0. Oh. He was down on the count in the fourth when Souza was caught trying to steal. That ended the inning. So Franklin begins the fifth. 2 and 1. Balls and a strike. Oswaldo Arcia on deck. <laughs> moves the count full. Another 3 2 pitch. Porcello last year for the Red Sox was 9 and 15. His first year here. He'd come off a 15 win season the year before against or for the Tigers. He was 15 and 13, and last year 9 and 15 with Boston. There's a shot toward left center field. Off the green monster, Franklin's going to dig for two and will be in there standing up. Franklin takes it the other way for a double. Continues to swing the bat at a very good rate here for the race. He talked about his last 10 games. You know, this ball meant to be in, it goes away, and Nick Franklin, instead of trying to pull that, he just takes it the other way. Bangs it right off the wall. You know what we were talking about earlier about what Kevin Cash had said, and he's absolutely right. He he looks different now. Think about the swing that we saw, you know, 
last year, earlier this year, he would have pulled off that pitch, yep. and that would have been a soft pop-up to shortstop or, or shallow left. Mm -hmm. But now he's staying on it, driving through it, and able to drive those pitches now. And that's the difference. He's not he's not falling, you know, up the first baseline to the right side. He's staying in there. Yeah, his swing is through the ball. In that case, the other way. Yeah, he's attacking the baseball, not trying to like feather it in there. And you know, the, it's translating. The results are there. Strike the count on Arcia. One. Raised down by a run. We talked about the Marcelo's time with the Tigers. He was drafted out of high school. He had committed to go to the University of North Carolina and decided instead to sign with Detroit. And now here in Boston. Grew up in New Jersey. Rays have Franklin in scoring position with the leadoff double. Marcia trying to at least move him over. Better yet, trying to get him home. But down 1 2. And he's out on strikes. The fastball up just a tad up out of the zone, strikes him out. One away, let's check in again with Todd Callis. All right, Dwayne, we talked with Kevin Kiermaier after he took BP today. Not only did he shag fly balls, took batting practice. He says he is ready to play tomorrow. But that's not how it works for the Rays. Of course, they're going to give him one more workout day. Then during the All-Star break, you'll see him play games for the Gulf Coast League Rays, the Charlotte Stone Crabs, and he's probably going to have a live BP day in there as well. Not only do the Rays miss his energy in the outfield, and also on the bases, guys, what he brings to the clubhouse and the dugout can't be replicated either. Back to you. Yeah, you're right about that. A foul ball by Casale. And I'll tell you, uh, we watched him take batting practice, and he had some good swings. And it appears that uh, that hand is okay. And so his target date would be when the Rays pick up play again after the All-Star break. So let's hope that it works out that way. Yeah, I think physically... There are no more issues. It's about getting the timing back, mm -hmm. timing down, big league pitching, just just live pitching in general. Fastballs, breaking balls, BP is one thing, but you got to get into game shape, and that's what you're looking to do. Kevin talking with Derek Shelton before the game, and in the batting cage, he did look comfortable. Yeah. Yeah, there's nothing inhibiting that swing. Long foul the other way out of play. Well, he's had that left hand fracture. And can't wait to get back. And you know, when you think about the defensive side, one of the problems the Rays faced was starting pitching and getting it to go deep enough so that the bullpen wasn't overextended. And there's just nobody's going to replace his defense. He'll get the balls and make plays on balls hit to center and to right and left center that nobody else is going to get to. And that, absent that, it makes it tougher for what was at the time a struggling rotation to go deeper into games. He might bail you out on a key play and get an out that you might not otherwise get. That's been the, a big loss for the Rays during this difficult stretch. One and two the count on Casale. He is out on strikes. So two strikeouts 
for Porcello after the leadoff double. Well, we said that his strikeout rate is at a career high, and he's gotten them this afternoon when he's needed them. You know, you think about the second inning, leadoff double to Corey Dickerson, then he strikes out Franklin with strikeout Casale to end the inning. And then here, a leadoff double to Franklin, a punch out of Arcia, a punch out of Casale. So not a big strikeout guy, but boy, he's picked the spots to get him in here. And a good matchup here. He gets it running in his favor with a strike call on a fastball to Forsyth. Logan, six out of 17 coming into this game against Purcello. That's a little over 350 and 0 for 2 today. Up with a man at second and two outs. And Purcello's ahead of him. Two strikes. Well, and, and he's had two pop ups today to the first baseman. Just unhittable pitches. You know, that, that last at bat, he got a cutter that, that, that stayed up in the zone. A pitch didn't have very good movement on it at all. Stayed up and, and he just missed it. Just missed that fastball and you saw him shaking his head. I wonder how comfortable he feels in the box right now. There's a one hopper. Oh, what a grab. Bogarts falls down, gets up wow. and makes the throw to retire the side. A tough play on a ball that had top spin on it that short hopped him, and he still gloved it and had time to make the throw to first to get foresight. Boy, I'll tell you, that eats up most infielders, and Bogarts made a great play to retire the Rays there in the top of the fifth. Matt Moore. Red Sox lead the race two to one here at Fenway Park. Sandy Leone, the catcher, leads it off and back around to the top of the order. Betts and Pedroia. First pitch is down. Moore touch for the two run home run by Bogarts in the bottom of the fourth. And then Bogarts made that great play on the ball hit by Forsyth. And the final out to prevent the Rays a chance to tie the game. The last inning, it has been the presence of Xander Bogarts to propel and maintain this Boston lead. Seemed like the uh, the air on the ground ball by Steven Souza Jr. woke Bogarts up, made a, an air on a routine ground ball, and since then we've seen him kick and get a tag on Souza Jr. on a tough play at second, hit the home run that played the last half inning. Someone woke up. Will somebody find a lullaby to put him back to sleep? <laughs> I'm telling yeah. you. Because you get him going. A 1 2 count on Sandy Leone. We 
drops low. Up the curveball. It's two and two. That picked up his first two strikeouts of the game to end the fourth. Leaving a couple base runners aboard. Down to third. Comes up on Longoria, but he gloves and makes a wide throw. And Leon is aboard. He's playing that ball off to his left, and you can see that ball take that strange hop on him right there at the end. Well, he, he's trying to get the hop. See how he plays that back? He gets it up top. Now this is a spin under control, and he's so accurate with his throws, you very rarely see this. He just kind of pulled that right along with the spin. Watch how he backs up, trying to play the hop up. Everything seems to be in order until you see where the throw ends up. They give Leon a hit. The Boston catcher aboard. Now the top of the order, Mookie Betts. And the miss wide on the change up. Betts one out of two today. Shot. Center field. Susan Jr. at the wall. And he can't catch it. He was lined up to grab it. The ball popped away from him. The Red Sox are going to have men in second and third. Boy, it appeared that he had traveled all that way and had got there to catch it and just could not squeeze it. He definitely put himself in position. That ball well struck by Betts. Now watch him get back there. He gets back there in plenty of time. Got to cover some ground. He just dropped it. That's all. The ball just off the, the thumb of the glove. You know what, Dwayne? When he goes back, he doesn't look the ball. Watch his eyes go to the wall right here. That'll be an error after a long run, and now big trouble. Nobody out. Pedroia at the plate. There's a pitch way wide on the fastball. Now, those eyes followed that baseball up until the last second, and then you can see the eyes go down to the wall, and that ball off the thumb of the glove. You are so right about that. into the dirt and two big misses here by Moore on the first two pitches into Pedroia that one a breaking ball and short hop raised down by one two Red Sox runners in scoring position with nobody out. Pedroia has already scored one of their two runs when he opened the fourth with a walk. And now ball three is upstairs. Sander Bogarts looms on deck. He's done enough already today. Strike three and one. Tough spot now for the Rays lefty. Liner into left, the base hit. One hop to Franklin. Leon has scored, throw to the plate. Not in time. Moore is there to back up Casale as both Leon and Betts score. And Pedroia winds up at second. Well, one. Yeah, and Dwayne, how about, first of all, the 3 1 curveball? 3 1 curveball and Pedroia all over it. The read by Mookie Betts, more impressive. 
He doesn't score unless he doesn't hesitate. This ball lined out to left field. You'll see a lot of guys hesitate because they think maybe Nick Franklin's got a shot to catch that. But Mookie Betts was off and watch him go. Turn and go. That's the only way he's able to score, that quick read. Boy. Single, two runs batted in, second on the throw to the plate, and it's four to one. Pedroia's in scoring position with nobody out. That's what this lineup can do to you. You give them a break, and suddenly you're back into the middle of the order and in big trouble. Yeah, and, and what a break. It, it, you know, it, it's it's either second and third, nobody out, or one out, runner on first. Bogarts takes the pitch wide. In a one-run game. That's yep. now four to one. Still nobody out. The, these are some of the, the fundamental mistakes that the Rays have been making far, far too frequently. You know, this stretch of 20 losses in 23 games, they're averaging almost an error a game. Mm -hmm. Well, everything the Rays had done right for so many years, they're doing wrong now. It's inside two and one. I mean, you get down to it. Almost every part of the game has been at issue. They're hitting home runs, a lot of solo home runs, and that's it. There are the errors. Yeah, I don't know. Stylus, the color. Yeah, the, the errors, you, you add one, at least one to that number. Mm hmm. Well, they have not gotten the quality starts that they had anticipated. And the bullpen has not been what they've anticipated. They've not been healthy the way they've anticipated. The defense has not been as good as they had anticipated. There is an inability offensively to manufacture runs. And about the one thing that they had hoped would happen that has happened is the increased power. They've hit more home runs, but they have not been successful in any of the other areas they thought they would be. And now Jim Hickey on the hill after the walk to Bogarts. Nobody out with two men on. And David Ortiz is due up. Well, Ortiz and Bryce Harper, Mike Trout. And all the baseball superstars come together for the primetime event lighting up the summer. The MLB All-Star Game from San Diego coming up Tuesday at 7.30 p.m. Eastern only on Fox. Now David Ortiz we're looking for the first out of the inning. And he starts Ortiz with a strike around the knees. One and one. More and the Rays trying to keep this game from getting out of hand in the bottom of the fifth. Ortiz came in with a lifetime average of 348 against Matt, including three home runs. Two and one. count 
Well, this is the third consecutive 3 1 count Matt Moore has had on a Boston hitter. Foul back. Takes it to 3 2. Granted, Pedroia is on second, Bogarts at first. And he got it. Strikes out David Ortiz. Fastball tied him up. Bit of extra velocity. Look at Casale setting up outer half. That ball's on the inside corner. David Ortiz, not, he doesn't know where Kirk Casale's setting up, so you, you miss your spot, but you get the good result. Now, in this situation, you'll take, take anything you can get. Jackie Bradley Jr. is one for two. of all Austin with two runs in the fourth inning and two more in the fifth helped along on the error the cut one and one boy nice nice change up and a good time to throw it right there by Matt Moore a strike one and two a fastball and a cut and a miss on another fastball. Bradley Jr. out of there. Uh, that was another location where Kurt Casale wanted that up around the shoulders, the letters. And this ends up being far. I mean, it's right down the middle between the thigh and the belt. Just overpowered him. Action in the bullpen. Floral, the right-hander. His major league debut before the Rays completed their homestand. Aaron Hill, one for two with a base hit. He becomes a very big hitter for Moore. Trying to keep this deficit at three, and he pops it up. Souza making the call short center. And so they limit the damage. A great job by Moore to do that. Two run score, it's four to one.
first inning open the scoring his 14th of the year. That has accounted for the Rays run in this game. Boston scored two in the fourth on a home run by Xander Bogarts. His 10th home run of the year. They added two in the fifth when Dustin Pedroia singled home Sandy Leone and Mookie Betts who had reached on an error. Both of those runs in the fifth turn out to be unearned. But they give Boston a four to one lead as we move into the sixth. And Brad Miller leads it off for the Rays. And a cut and a miss. Porcello through the first five innings had made 75 pitches and had 15 out of 20 first pitch strikes and 9 0 2 counts. Pretty good way to pitch, and here's another 10 0 2. 10. Yep. Man. I'll tell you, if you do that, 15 of 20 first pitch strikes and 9 now 10 0 2 counts. Uh, you're putting the odds in your favor. Yeah. You, you ask uh, the question, how do how do the Rays have a run when you when you're putting up numbers like that? Liner right center, but Betts is there and makes the catch. You know, and that that far too hittable of a pitch in an 0-2 count. So a mistake made. Brad Miller roped that thing, but Mookie Betts made that look easy. There is the line on the 27 year old right hander. No walks that's not unusual. He came in he'd walked only 21 in 106 innings. Yeah I tell you you do yourself such a favor by not allowing extra base runners. Just limit your walks limit opportunities. You know, this is his third start against the Rays already this season. The other two resulted in Red Sox wins. Doing didn't he he threw the shutout for the Tigers when you and I broadcasted from the porch a couple of years ago. <laughs> I think you're right about yeah. that. Yeah. Base hit through the hole for Longoria. I continue to be very impressed with your sense of recall. I just remember that you were livid that we were missing such a well pitched game out in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> and that's happened to you before. It has. <laughs> we called a no hitter from somewhere in the next county beyond center field one time. <laughs> we're going to do a game. Let's do a game from Ferg's. Hey, what a great idea. <laughs> yeah. Get real weird by the fourth. Yeah, we got to figure out a place to do one of those where we can actually see the plate when we do one again. <laughs> There's a strike to Logan Morris. That would be helpful. Yep. Well, that was that Edwin Jackson no hitter, and uh, I love Edwin Jackson, but I'm not sure he saw the plate any better than we did when he threw that no hitter. Does that even does it count? <laughs> What did he, he had what, eight walks at least I think. eight or nine. Yep. And a, about one hundred and forty nine pitches something like that. Pitched out of the stretch the entire game but hey <laughs> never gave up a hit a no hitter. Oh to the count on Logan Morrison. Through the middle, base hit, a little liner into center. Evan moves up to second. Well, the Rays with a couple base runners now. And Steven Souza Jr. will be on his way to the plate. Well, he could make a big difference here. Rays come right back in the sixth and threaten and get the potential tying run to the plate. Souza today has struck out and reached on an error. 
you know he came in hitting 400 off Porcello, six of 15. So let's see what happens here. Porcello throws him a strike. Porcello has this pitching thing down pretty good. I mean, if he's not pitching against you, he's kind of fun to watch. Ground ball. No way. Bogarts. Pedroia one, first base two. He throws the double play ball, and he can do that. His career ground ball rate over 50%. Not quite that this year, and he needed this, and that's exactly what he got. Double play ball, the Rays are out. We go to the bottom of the sixth. Four to one, Boston. We go to the Boston half of the sixth. Four to one. The Red Sox lead the Rays. Matt Moore had a long fifth inning. Touch for a couple of runs. A defensive mistake behind him. But a good job of getting out of a first and third or first and second nobody out situation, leaving two. And now swing and a miss by Travis Shaw to open the bottom of the sixth. Fastball to start him. 90 pitches now by Matt Moore. A strike into the sixth. 0 2. Prince will be next. Then the catcher Leon. Two and two. Matt five and five overall. Oh and three on the road this year. His last road win came here in Boston last September. Will be a fair ball and more off the mound to cover, and they get Travis Shaw. One down, let's check in with Todd. All right, Dwayne, still time to bid on the Matt Moore pitching lesson. Here's how you go to raisebaseball.com slash auctions. It's for kids 10 to 18. You get four kids that can get a lesson through an hour's worth of lessons on the Trump Canna Field Stadium field. 
Matt Moore will be teaching. You also get personalized jerseys. Pre-game passes for eight to go on the field, and then eight tickets to the game. Also, guys, same website, wearingsbaseball.com slash auctions. You can pick up Memorial Day game-worn jerseys and caps. All those biddings end tomorrow night. Back to you. Yeah, Matt's had a pretty good run going recently here. To get to five and five, and a nice job today. Gave up the two-run home run to Bogarts, and then had a little issue of support behind him in the fifth, but limited the damage to what could have been much, much worse. He's ahead of Prince. Two strikes. I tell you, you got to give a pitcher a lot of credit. To open the fifth the way the Rays did, the bottom of the fifth there. Leon got that infield hit, and that was a little tainted. And then the error on the ball that Betts hit, and that set up a second and third nobody out situation. This one charged, picked up by Longoria, and a nice play on the move. Longoria cutting to his left. Makes a good play to get Brintz. And that's why you want your third baseman taking anything that he can get to. He's moving towards first base. Boy, look at that range he shows, getting down and then getting rid of that ball in a hurry. And he's able to get the second out of the inning. But, you know, Dwayne, to your point, you go back. That, that you talk about the tainted Leon. That's a play that, that he makes 99 and a half times out of 100. That's exactly right. And the fly ball. So really, you make a case that there's two outs, nobody on when Pedroia gets a base hit, mm -hmm. which, by the way, may have never happened because the whole sequence of pitches would have probably been different. But, boy, what a turn of events, and you're right. You see those kind of innings a lot of times spiral out of control. Yep. And, and Matt Moore kept it palatable. A one strike count on Leon. Two out, sixth inning. One and one. Just foul. Jeff Nelson, the crew chief, on the call. He'll be behind the plate tomorrow. I mean, look at the look uh, of Jeff Nelson. Does that look like mid July? No. <laughs> I mean, this is September. I, I'm, I'm, I'm expecting that this game to be over and we get home for the college football game tonight. This is ridiculous. <laughs> there was 63 degrees at the start of this game. He's jacking it up there. He is, collar up, 80s style. <laughs> Foul ball right back. So that was a style in the 80s. That's no longer stylish. Is that what you're saying? It's, if it's uh, not. I'm glad you told me. It's not as popular. <laughs> I know you like to go with it, but that's a whole different. You know, it's a whole different deal you got going. You can pull it off. There you are. Look at that. Yeah. Well, that's to keep the wind off the deck. Yeah. There's I don't, a practical I don't reason like for that. Yeah. It's not. That's not for style. Through the middle, Moore gave it a reach, but it was by him, and Leon is on again. Two-out single for the Boston catcher. Here's what's coming up tomorrow on Rays Live, the pregame show, presented by your Gulf Coast Honda dealers. Right hander Jake Odorizzi on the mound. We'll hear from him. Doug Wechter will be breaking down David Price and his struggles versus the Rays this year.
top of the order Mookie Betts. This will be his fourth plate appearance of the day. A ball no strikes. Into the dirt blocked by Kurt Casale. Curveball. 2 and 0. Cleveland leading the Yankees today in Cleveland. In the top of the six, 5 to 3. Raised down here 4 to 1. Angels lead the Orioles 2 to 1 in Baltimore in the top half of the sixth. It's a strike two and one. Tigers have beaten the Blue Jays three to two. Headed to short. Miller with the underhanded flip to Logan Forsythe. We're headed into the seventh inning. Four to one, Boston. Day in 2005, Johnny Gomes' two run walk off home run off Troy Percival gives the Rays a 5 4 win, snaps the Tampa Bay 10 game losing streak. That was 474 feet, still standing as the second longest homer in Tropicana Field history. And still standing is my favorite Johnny Gomes home run ever. <laughs> One of my top. Uh, the fact that he hits it. And then he's just telling everybody, come on, you guys come out and meet me. Come on, it's a party. Yeah, this is a no-doubter. <laughs> well, we go to the seventh. That's so him, too. Absolutely. It's in love of mine. Yep. Pitches down to Corey Dickerson. You know, you want some life on a team, he's the guy to have. Well, what about the home run that he hit here against the Rays where halfway down the third base line he punted his helmet about 37 <laughs> yards dropped it you know coffin corner <laughs> I still don't know how you punt a batting helmet that hard and not break your foot shift on for Dickerson Double off the green monster in the second inning line to left His last time up that was in the fourth Embry the right hander we saw him last night Tommy Lane the lefty for 
Marcelo. Just about to make his 90th pitch. He underhands it. Dickerson is out. Pitcher first. MLB.TV Premium, the number one live streaming sports service, delivers everything you've come to expect and even more. Watch every out-of-market game live in HD on over 400 supported devices. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Just visit MLB.TV for details. Here's Nick Franklin. Lines it toward right center. Betts is there and makes the catch. He moved to his right and then had to cut in. Two gone. Franklin continues to hit the ball well. That's all he can do, hit the ball hard. He hits a liner out there that Betts able to make the play on. Really impressed with his play lately. Waldo Arcia. One strike the count. Got the back foot out of the way. Fly ball to center and a strikeout on a fastball up. His last time. He's 0 for 2. Ground ball right side. A little bobble and the throw just in time. Arcia. Out Hill made the pickup and the play. Cash, Kevin Cash might want to look at that one, so we're going to wait just a second or two. And he says, nope, that's all right. Three up, three down, middle of the seventh, 4 1 Boston. Marcello, the pitching matchup today. Brad Miller gave the Rays an early lead. Xander Bogarts erased that with a two run home run. Red Sox added two unearned runs in the fifth, and we go to the bottom of the seventh now. Four to one. Matt Moore out of the game, and Dylan Floro on his first pitch is a strike. He made his major league debut Thursday. That came against the Angels, an inning and a third. A run and three hits.
chopper to the right side. Forsyth makes the play. One out here in the bottom of the seventh time again to check in with Todd Callis. Dwayne, we have the actual jersey that will be worn on All-Star Tuesday for Alex Colome. Here it is. This is what you're going to see Alex wearing at Petco Park in San Diego. Coming up on Tuesday night, seen exclusively on Fox. It's got the two stars up here by the MLB logo. Then on the sleeve, it's got the San Diego All-Star patch. Here's the travel bag he'll be using, guys. And not too many flights leave late out of Boston on a Sunday night to get into San Diego. So Alex has been able to pitch a ride with the other Red Sox All-Stars, Poppy, Mookie, Bogarts, all those guys. And Alex will be on that same charter tomorrow night. Uh, so he's able to get to San Diego in time for all the festivities beginning on Monday. It's going to be quite a moment for Alex Colome. He's looking forward to it. And the Rays are certainly excited for him, guys. Yeah, and congratulations to Colome for such a great year so far going into that role. He thought he might be a setup guy until uh, the injury and Brad Boxberger trying to rehab and come back and in the middle of all of that Colome became the closer. Round ball back to the mound and Floro's flip to first retires Bogarts. So he's well deserving. We're very happy for Alex Colome. Yeah you can't I mean what he's done like you said not even expecting maybe to be in that role and, and how good he's been been flawless really when it comes down to save opportunities and you know and a great guy too I mean just yeah. a, a competitor hard nose like guy that you don't mind handing the ball to <laughs> to start that ninth inning on a side note though Dwayne yeah and I know Todd has been extremely busy today he's been giddy mm -hmm. he's had that look you know the look I'm talking about yeah that's been on his face all day and he's had lots to share but I'm not really sure why he felt the need to show us the travel bag okay the jersey I get but and here's the travel bag Hey, it's uh, an all-star experience. It, it, it's a travel bag. It looks like every <laughs> other travel bag. I mean, and here's their toothbrush and the holder that they get with it. Their goodie bag. Hey, he's a very sharing guy. He is. Yep, he, he is. is. And he's, he went. He went. Uh, he went aggressive purple today too, <laughs> with the, with the guard. On and two, the count to David Ortiz. A couple of ground balls from Floro. There's another one foul down in front of Ruben Romero and beyond. I just want to, you know what I want to see is I want to see the interview with Todd and Alex when he comes back from the All Star game. And he's asking him about his experience. We can get George Pappas down there to translate and mm -hmm. get the full deal. Yep. Foul ball out of play. Although <laughs> the other day, Todd uh, kind of froze George Pappas out of that interview and just went one on one with Alex Colomay. Well, no, no. I mean, the, 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 I want George Pappas to translate Todd's questions. Oh, I get you. Yeah. Good he, idea. He, he, his, his questions were suspect the best. <laughs> ball, Longoria alone on the left side. Three up, three down, three ground balls from Floro. We go to the eighth. Four to one, Boston.
much. We do indeed go to the eighth. And we have seen the last of Rick Porcello for the day. Porcello seven innings. And he gives way to Matt Barnes. The Rays have Kurt Casale to lead off. And the first pitch is a strike. Casale 0 for 2. A couple of strikeouts. Two of the five strikeouts for Rick Porcello in seven innings. He didn't walk anybody, gave up six hits and a run. That came on the Brad Miller home run. How about the fact that four of the five strikeouts by Rick Porcello came after leadoff doubles? Mm -hmm. well, he really toughened up when he had to and kept the Rays at just that one run, which was an opposite field homer in the first inning. Well, he was 21 of 27 in first pitch strikes and had 11 02 counts. <laughs> it's pretty good. Because Sally lifts one into left center. Brent's waiting for it, and that's out number one. We'll go back to the top of the order. Logan Forsyth. Logan retired in the fifth on a good play by Bogarts at short. You talk about a guy turning around a day. Bogarts had grounded into a double play, made the error at shortstop, and from that point forward, nothing but excellence. Yeah, sometimes that's all it takes. You know, you do a couple of things out there that you're not real proud of, and, and, you, and you feel embarrassed. And all of a sudden, you become bound and determined that it ends right there. And boy, he you're right, he turned it around in a big, big way in all facets of the game, too. That's right. One and one, the count. We hit the home run in the fourth that gave Boston the lead. Ground ball to Bogarts. Two outs in the eighth. Well, Matt Moore, six innings, seven hits, four runs, two earned, four strikeouts, and three walks. And you see the line that we mentioned on Rick Porcello. So two pretty good jobs here by Matt Moore and Rick Porcello in what is a four to one game. Two unearned runs loom very big right now. Yeah, they, they, the margin for error got a little bit bigger because of that. And and actually, the whole beginning to that inning could have been two outs, nobody on. With the ground ball to Evan, the, the throw was wide. And Susie Jr. just is playing that fly ball out in left center field. Two big, big runs. And the only other two came on a leadoff walk. And the home run by Bogarts. Two things that Matt Moore has really limited in this recent run of his. A couple of fastballs up. Miller missing both of them, both out of the zone. 0 2. Well, Barnes has a big fastball, sits in the mid 90s. He came in the ball game last night, struck out the side while well, walking one. Even more there. A ball, two strikes. Ray's got that run in the first. They also got a base hit from Logan Morrison. Dickerson doubled in the second. Franklin doubled in the fifth. They got singles from Longoria and Morrison in the sixth inning. And that accounts for the Rays offense to this point. We're in the eighth, two gone. One and two to Miller. Two balls, two strikes. A 
with Longoria on deck. Ball forcing another 2 2 pitch. Popped up Hill from third into foul territory. Raise her out in the eighth. Bottom half of the frame coming. 4-1 Boston. On Fox Sports Sun is brought to you by Dodge. Visit your local Dodge dealer today. By Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. And by your Southern Chevy dealers. How do you maintain your concentration? With Sweet Caroline in the background? Oh, that was going on? Yeah. We go into the bottom of the eighth. Jackie Bradley Jr. fouls it right back. Strike one. I mean, I'm going to tell you something. We come here a lot. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of, you know, wonderful experiences. We go on road trips to certain ballparks. Mm -hmm. That's not one of them. And if <laughs> the touching me, if there, if there was one thing I could touch, it would be the tip of Neil Diamond's chin with my fist <laughs> for making that song. Because it's gotten out of hand here. I'm done. Tapper foul. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Bullpen is busy for the Red Sox now. Fly ball, center field, long run, and it's going to get past Susan Jr. Bradley goes to second and will stop. With a leadoff double. See, it's got everybody in a frenzy now. They were all loud before singing it. That's why I didn't know how you even were able to get through those billboards. <laughs> and then this happens. I'm guessing that you don't want to listen to the song. No, I asked. Uh, no. <laughs> You have to listen even if you're trying to listen to the song or well, trying not to listen to the song. Yesterday I took a little walk in the eighth. <laughs>
today I tried to hang tight and it, I just I lost my mind there for a second. I apologize, but I can't take it. There's a strike to Aaron Hill. Well, you know, when you hear something over and over and over and over and over and over and over again, yeah, yeah. I get you. It, it grates a little bit. Mm -hmm. and, and when it's in the midst of a, a really bad slide as yep. far as losing goes, and you're losing this game too, it yeah. just really annoys you. Yep. I'm better now. <laughs> Felt like I, I'm, I was on the couch. Good. Now I'm not on the couch. Good. Let's move on. Get it out, express it, yep. and move it. He did go on that one, and the count is one and two to Aaron Hill. Dinner's going to be fun tonight. I know. I, it'll probably be so long. I don't <laughs> think anybody wants to be around me right now, and I don't blame him. I'm going to lock myself in my room. One and two, the count. Hill out on strikes. The action on that pitch by Flora. He's got a nice sinker going. Yeah. You know, he was a starting pitcher. In fact, the Rays actually drafted him twice. Didn't sign the first time, and they went back later and drafted him. And that's a good look at that pitch there. At 93. Yeah. Yeah, he's got that whippy arm action. And that, that's what allows him to have an active hand out in front and get that kind of sink. But that was that was an impressive pitch right there. He's been a starting pitcher in the system. They're going to walk Shaw with Brent's coming up next. Maybe look for the ground ball. And uh, he's gone to the bullpen this year and has now come up as a reliever for the Rays. And who knows, uh, that could be his ticket to the big leagues. You know, you know, listen, those guys are valuable. When you think about a guy that can come out of the bullpen, can give you multiple innings, has a good sinker, can come into those situations, first and second, nobody out, you know, try to get a ground ball, double play, and become highly valuable. And you, you can see maybe that's his path. First and second now with the intentional walk to Shaw following the leadoff double by Bradley and the strikeout of Hill. Bryce Prince. Couple of ground balls against Moore today. And the Rays would like to get a chance to turn a double play here. He takes a strike. Little tap, that's foul. Two strikes. This is one of those situations, first and second, one out. Hit the ball into the ground. Now you got a chance to go for a strikeout. You see what the song has done to the people? <laughs> There's a buzz here now. That's right. I guess that is the point, but. Ground ball right side. And Forsythe's going to have to go to first. Just got him there. He wanted to go to second and could not get a throw away. And fortunately, Managed to get at least the out at first, and the Red Sox manager John Farrell's not all that sure, and he's going to ask him to take a look. Yeah, th this is a quick ask too, and here's what you're talking about, Dwayne. He just cannot find the baseball, has to then turn and whip it to first, and uh, boy, that is close. That is really, really close. Well, you saw Ruben Amaro, the first base coach, called him safe. He thought so. Well, Floro got the ground ball. They've asked the umpires, John Farrell has asked the umpires to take a look at this. 
here. The crowd showing it on the, the big screen here at Fenway Park, and they seem to think he's going to be safe. We'll see. I think that's what it is. I, you know, nothing was it clear and convincing. No, I, yeah. I agree. I agree. I'll tell you, when you get that other view, pretty nifty handiwork there by Logan Forsythe. Mm -hmm. Not only did he not get a hold of that baseball, they actually dropped that thing, was able to snatch it out of the air before it hit the ground and make that throw to first. So Good they job. salvage one out. Yeah. Two men in scoring position. Here's Sandy Leone. Fastball for a strike. You know, uh, Floro hit 94 with that pitch. Yeah, I'm kind of liking what I'm seeing right here. Yeah. You get a guy who can throw 94 with a sinker. That right. You like it. Pitched at Cal State Fullerton. And one. Bradley at third. Shaw at second. Two and one. Chopper the other way foul. If he would throw that sinker, a front door sinker, it's that strike three. Sandy Leone wouldn't even swing. He's been nothing but away and away off the plate for the balls. He came inside with that sinker right now, punch out without even a swing. Time granted by Corey Blazer. He got him. Struck him out reaching. And a nice job by Floro there after the leadoff double. We go to the ninth, 4 1. We go to the ninth inning. Fans tune in after the postgame for Inside the Rays. Derek Shelton 
follow along as Todd Callis takes viewers into the world of the Rays hitting coach Derek Shelton will follow him throughout the course of a game day as he prepares for that night's opponent and gives insight that only a big league coach could. Rays will be facing coach Uehara. And Evan Longoria will lead off the ninth inning against him. Red Sox have lost their closer, Craig Kimbrell, for three to six weeks. Louis Hara finished last night's game when Longoria homered off him to make it a one run game. It ended that way, and here's Evan leading off the ninth, taking a big cut and missing. Strike one. That home run for Evan last night gives him 19. He hit 18 home runs before the All-Star break back in 2013. And there's a liner base hit into left toward the line and a leadoff single for Evan Longoria. That, that's one of those examples of plate coverage. A nice adjustment made by Evan Longoria. Uihara comes back with the same exact pitch, but watch the swing just go out and get it. He just gets around that baseball, I'll tell you. A little bit out in front, but around it, a leadoff base runner. That's what the Rays need. They're down by three. Now it's Logan Morrison. Takes the ball. Red Sox got Brad Ziegler from Arizona today. He is not active yet. Little number at third base side. Down to second. They get the out there. Bogarts. Made the pickup and gets the assist on the throw to Pedroia. The only man over there, and that was a little cue shot by Logan Morrison. And Bogart's kind of a blind throw to second base. Couldn't really see where Evan Longoria was, but got to understand timing. Steven Souza Jr. Outside. Souza 0 for 3. Reached on an error in the fourth. He's caught stealing. Porcello was excellent for seven innings. Matt Barnes pitched one perfect inning. And now it's Uihara. Foul back. Pitch up top of the zone. That fastball in the upper 80s. That one hit 87. And it's not much harder than that at any given time. Maybe an 88. Maybe as you see him touch 89. But he's in that general vicinity with the heater and still racks up strikeouts you know, like he's throwing 97. Two and two. He does hide the ball well. And that at times can make that 87 88 look a little bit harder because he just if the, if the ball's all of a sudden to the release point mm -hmm. and you don't see it before that. Short arm action. He's got a pretty good split too. And a take on that pitch. Just down. He went with the splitter and 
that was a borderline pitch right there. Yeah, and that's a really, really good take by Sousa Jr. Because that was enticing. That's that's a strikeout pitch. Now it's three and two. Popped up foul. Carries out of play. We'll be with you tomorrow. Our coverage begins at one o'clock when Jay Goderizzi faces David Price in the wrap up game of this series. Three two again. And it's foul out of play one more time. He's a junior right now hitting 252 with 10 home runs. Bounces it foul, forcing another 3 2 pitch. Sousa's last at bat last night came against Matt Barnes. Barnes pitched the eighth today again, and Uwe Har is on for the ninth high throw to first. That's a little different experience, Barnes and Uwe Har. Barnes about 98, topping out. Uehara, as you mentioned, topping out at maybe 88. Yeah, opposite ends of the spectrum. Oh, strike three call. Souza thought that was wide, and it appeared to be so. And he's not happy. Yeah, and, and understandable. That fastball it, it, it got yanked by Uehara. Off the plate, and the call goes against Sousa Jr. That would have gotten the tying run to the plate. That ball, yeah. you could see Leon reaching for it. Oh my, that hurts. That hurts. Yep. You're right because the tying run would have been at the plate in Dickerson. Yeah. With power to tie the game. It's a tough call to miss by Blazer. It's wide to Dickerson. That's a foul ball. Thumb guard goes flying again. Two balls and a strike. Ray's got a leadoff base hit from Longoria. Morris enforced him at second. Sousa called out on strikes. Ray's down to their final out, a 2 1 count to Corey Dickerson. That foul ball runs the count even. Have been out hit 8 7 and they trailed 4 to 1. Full house at Fenway Park. The starters are the pitchers of record. We are ready. Cut the miss. Leon goes down to first. This game is over. A couple of strikeouts in the ninth for Uy.